the Russians had been allowed to take the east. The west, bordering Germany, was incorporated into the Reich. It would be settled by Germans. To make room for them, Poles would be shifted into what was left, the area ruled by Hans Frank. This was the first practical step towards redrawing the map of Europe on racial lines. The forced migration dragged on for years. People of German blood were helped to move into the German section. To make room for them, over a million Poles were uprooted and pushed east into Hans Frank's domain. Thousands died. The re-Germanization program was handled by Himmler's SS Race and Resettlement Office. This re-Germanization was, of course, an extremely difficult undertaking and was carried out by special commissions who tried to evaluate the people racially, since one couldn't evaluate people's political convictions, whether someone in his heart of hearts is still pro-Polish. Um, we said, it's pointless burdening ourselves with Poles, we must examine them. So one of the leaders of the Race and Resettlement Office was allocated, who tested the people there. Then, according to the result of the test, they were divided into categories. To the Nazis, the Poles were inferior. Polish Jews, all three million of them, were subhumanity and to be treated as such. They were ordered to wear an identifying star. Wearing the star, Jews were immediately recognizable. Forbidden to travel without permission, Polish Jews were subject to curfew, to harassment. They could be seized at any time without warning and put to forced labor. The official line was that Jews were to blame for starting the war. So now they were filmed for the German newsreels, being made to clear up the mess. The Germans forbade the Jews to enter the shops which were under German ownership, Volksdeutsch, ethnic Germans. They ordered them to take off their hats in front of every German. In fact, all Jewish life was just cut off, stopped. A reasonable anti-Semitism must lead to the expulsion of the Jews. All along, Hitler had promised to purify the Reich. It was decided that this could now be done. Jews would be moved to reservations in Poland. Notices went up. All Jews in Poland, plus a million from the Greater Reich, were to be moved into designated areas.
We took a small cart. I, together with father, made a small cart and we began to move. Thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people were walking, taking their belongings with them. Some on their heads, some on their backs, some on their shoulders. There were children, old people, babies, all of them, like the exile of the peoples, the exile from Egypt. But it was interesting also to see the Aryan side, the Poles, the Christians, how they were watching. Some of them, lots of them, clapped their hands. Oh, they were happy about it. Now we'll buy their flats. We'll take over. We'll have it good. All the furniture that the Jews leave, we'll have everything. Soon, Frank's area of Poland was so overcrowded with Jews that he complained to Hitler. The deportations must stop. He could not handle any more Jews. Hitler agreed. An alternative solution must be found. Suddenly, events in the war invited the re-examination of an old solution. In the summer of 1940, Hitler had attacked Western Europe. If this campaign ended the war, then it might again be possible to solve the Jewish question by emigration overseas. Officials examining the problem favoured sending them to Madagascar, an island off the coast of Africa, a French possession.